Hi, welcome to Avocet Math. In this video, we're going to look at one of the problems from our set of AMC 10 counting problems. So let's see what we have. How many two-digit positive integers have at least one seven as a digit? So being problem two from this particular AMC 10 exam, it's uh, probably one of the simpler counting problems. And, and one method that you may want to consider for the simpler problems is just try to use brute force. So let's try to use a brute force method for counting this set. So let's count up all two-digit numbers with seven as the units digit as being two, one, seven, two, seven, three, seven, all the way up to and including nine, seven, for a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine values. And now let's count up the two-digit numbers with the seven as a tens digit as being seven, zero, seven, one, seven, two, up to and including seven, nine, for a total of zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten values. But we have to recognize that in the second list, we're counting 77. And that number was already counted from our first list. So we don't want to double count that. So we have to eliminate that from our second count and adjust our count down by one to give a total value of 18 two-digit numbers that have at least one seven as a digit for choice B. Now there's a second way to count this. It's a little more clever. And to do that, we have to recognize that the set we're trying to count is basically a subset of all two-digit numbers. So let me represent the set of all two-digit numbers as this box. And the subset that we're trying to count, I'll represent with this shaded region here to indicate the set of numbers from this condition. And what we realize is that this set is a little bit tricky to count, but we just have to consider how many digits we have, where they occur, and uh, we've seen a little bit of trickiness here in terms of double counting. But uh, what we can recognize is that it's actually quite simple to count the number of two-digit numbers, and it's also quite simple, as it turns out, to count the opposite set, the set of two-digit numbers that contain no seven. So one strategy to count the shaded region is just to count up all two-digit numbers and then subtract the number of two-digit numbers that contain no seven. So let's see how we might do that. So first, let's count up the set of all two-digit numbers as being 10 to 99. And we know how to do that. It's a simply 99 minus 10 plus one, since we're counting the endpoints, for a total of 90 two-digit numbers. Now to count the number of two-digit numbers that contain no seven, we have to be a little more careful and consider the tens place and the units place digit separately. And first, let's consider how many choices we have to, for the digits in the tens place. It could come from the set of nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And of course, we're not counting seven, but being the first digit of a two-digit number, we also don't want to count zero. So we have a choice of eight different numbers to select for the tens digit of our two-digit number. Now for the units digit, we basically have the same choice. We don't want to choose seven. However, for the units digit, we can include the number zero. So we have essentially nine choices for the zeros digit, or the uh, units digit, excuse me. And at this point, we have to make a critical judgment. We have to decide if our choice for the tens digit is independent of our choice for the units digit. And in this particular case, they are independent choices, in which case we can use the multiplication principle for counting this compound set as being just the multiplication of the number of possibilities for the tens digit times the number of possibilities for the units digit to give a total of 72 numbers that contain no seven in either the units or the tens place. And subtracting these two numbers, we get the total number that we're trying to seek, the shaded region set for a total of 18, which again corresponds to choice B. Now in the case of the two-digit number, it really didn't matter which of these two methods we used to solve. They roughly were about the same amount of work. But when we sort of consider the possibility of extending this problem to three digits, we realize that counting three digits by the brute force method would be very, very difficult. You'd have to consider both the tens digit, the units digit, the hundreds digit. You'd have to consider cases of one seven, two sevens, or three sevens. And you can sort of imagine the double counting that you'd have to correct for and how that would become very complicated. But we notice is that if we expand this problem to three digits, our second counting method 
actually is no more difficult for three digits than it is for two digits. So let's see what that might look like. So expanding this problem to three digits, we realize that the total number of three digit numbers is given by a similar formula, 999 minus 100 plus one, which is equal to 900, the total number of three digit numbers. And the total number of three digit numbers that contain no seven now is given by a similar formula. It's given by the choices for the hundreds digit, which is eight, times the number of choices for the tens digit, which is nine, times the number of choices for the units digit, which is nine, for a total of 648. And subtracting these two numbers, we can come to the conclusion that the number of three digit numbers that have at least one seven as a digit is given by 252. Again, a very simple result for three digits as it was for two digits. And it's a good problem to illustrate the two different weth methods of, of counting for this particular problem. So anyway, hope that was clear. Take care. Bye.